Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing a design example of a one-way spanning slab. But first, I wanna talk about the most common types of concrete slabs that you may encounter or that you need to design. I'm modeling the design example, which I'll be going through later in Robot. And the reason I'm doing this will be explained at the end of the video, so make sure you keep watching. So the first slab, which is what I'm gonna be going through later, is the one-way spanning slab. As the name suggests, it's a slab which is designed to span one way. This is achieved by providing main reinforcement in one direction only. Next, we have a two-way spanning slab. Again, as the name suggests, this slab spans in both directions. Generally, a two-way spanning slab is supported on concrete beams. I don't find these particularly common anymore and designs are normally done as flat slabs. Flat slabs are very similar to two-way spanning slabs, except they don't rely on beams for support at the edges. Flat slab design is very important and it's imperative to learn how to design them. Flat slabs are very efficient and architects and contractors like them. They like them because of the flat soffit which looks a lot neater and contractors like them because they are really quick to construct. Setting up formwork is very time consuming and keeping it a flat soffit makes it easier to compare to setting up formwork for downstand beams which is what you'd need to do for a two way spanning slab. Next we have post tension slabs which are very similar to flat slab design only with the added post-tension strands that are installed. These strands enhance the flexural capabilities of the slab. In situations where you have a very long span, it's often more cost-effective to design them as post-tension rather than a typical flat slab. Next, we have a waffle slab, and you don't see these designed much anymore in new buildings, but you can see them around in existing buildings quite often, so it's still important to know how they are designed. Waffle slabs are actually really good because it saves weight and therefore reduces the load on the foundations and thus reducing the cost. The main downside to these is the time it takes to construct. It's important to know how different slabs are designed, even the ones that aren't commonly used anymore, because you'll likely work on refurb projects where you'll see older designs and older construction techniques, so it's really important to understand how these work so that you can back analyse these structures. Okay, so let's crack on with the example for a one-way spanning concrete slab. So what we have is a simple frame, six columns, with primary beams and secondary beams. Spanning between our primary beams, we have our one-way spanning slab. The span of the secondary beams and the one-way spanning slab is gonna be five meters, and the span of the primary beam is gonna be seven meters. The slab is gonna be simply supported off the secondary beams. The slab is gonna be 250 mil thick. The concrete cover is gonna be 30 mil top and bottom, and we're gonna be using a C3240 concrete grade. The superimposed dead load will be 2 kilonewtons per meter squared. The live load or the imposed load is going to be 3 kilonewtons per meter squared. We need to work out the self weight of the concrete slab which is simply done by multiplying the density of concrete which is 25 by the thickness of 0.25. So before we start designing the concrete slab and working out the reinforcement we need to analyse the concrete slab and calculate the bending moments and the shear forces. We design slabs as one meter beam strips. So all we have to do is convert the area loads which we had in the previous page to a UDL load, which is a kilonewton per meter by multiplying by one. I like to sum up the loads as unfactored and factored and I'll be using the Eurocode factors. So 1.35 for dead and 1.5 for live. So first we need to work out the bending moment, which is simply WL squared upon eight, and then the shear force, which is W times L over two. Now that we've worked out the bending moment, we can now design the slab and work out the reinforcement required for the concrete slab. So first we need to work out the K value, which is M over BD squared times FCK. We haven't actually worked out the effective depth yet, which is D. So let's go ahead and do that. The effective depth is the height of the section minus the cover minus half of the main bar. Because we haven't actually worked out the size of the bars yet, let's just guess that the main bar is going to be 20 mil diameter. Now that we calculated the effective depth, let's just plug in the numbers and work out the K value. In the UK, we want the K value to be less than 0.168, and this ensures ductile failure. If it's less than 0.168, it means that we don't need compression reinforcement. Next, we need to work out the lever arm Z which is denoted by this formula. The lever arm Z needs to be less than or equal to 0.95D. Plug in the numbers and you'll work out the value of Z. In this instance, the value of Z is actually greater than 0.95D. So we actually need to use the value of 0.95D in our next equation. So to work out the reinforcement, it's really easy. All it is is the moment divided by the design yield stress of reinforcement times by Z. Plug the numbers in 
and we get a reinforcement required of 565 millimeters squared per meter. It just so happens that H12 at 200 centers is exactly 565 millimeters squared per meter, so we'll be using that. It's also worth checking the AS min, which is the minimum steel required in the concrete section. You can find the value of FCTM in the code. In this instance, because we're using FC3240 concrete, the value of FCTM is free. FYK is 500 newtons per millimeter squared. So just plug my numbers in and we get an AS min of 328 millimeter squared per meter. We're going to be providing 565, which is obviously greater than 328, so we meet the minimum requirements. So now we need to check the shear requirements. It's actually unusual for a slab to have a shear reinforcement, and generally you only really see it in flat slab design when you need shear reinforcement near columns. So to see if we need shear reinforcement, we need to check that VED is less than VRDC. VRDC is calculated by this equation. K is given as 1 plus the square root of 200 over the effective depth, and rho is the area of steel provided over BD. Plug the numbers in and you get VRDC is 0.486 newtons per millimeter squared. Now we need to work out VED, which is the shear force we worked out earlier, divided by BD. Remember that we need to convert kilonewtons to newtons, so we need to multiply by 1000. So we get a shear stress of 0.186 newtons per millimeter squared, which is less than VRDC, therefore we don't need a shear reinforcement. I'm going to skip the deflection check on this example, but if you do need an example on how to do it, go check out my RC beam design video as I explain it there. So the reason why I was showing you me making a 3D model of the design example I just went through is because I've genuinely seen graduates build 3D models to design the simplest things and so often building a 3D model takes so much more time than just doing it by hand. Also added to the fact that sometimes trying to model something so simple like a one-way spanning slab can actually be really really tricky and for the inexperienced they may not even know what the analytical output is actually showing them and they end up using the wrong values from the computer output to design their concrete slab. Using analysis software is actually very dangerous if you're not doing the right checks by hand, so you really do need to understand how things are designed and analysed by hand first before you jump onto a computer program. We can actually see that the load has actually transferred like a one-way spanning slab because you can see that the bending moment and the shear forces on the beams look about right. But when you jump on to look at the bending moments for this slab, it actually looks completely wrong and not like a one-way spanning slab at all. I won't get into how to actually model a one-way spanning slab because to be honest I don't think it's even worth the time to do it. If you need to design a one-way spanning slab just do it by hand it's so much easier and so much faster. If you've enjoyed the video please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you on the next video. Cheers!